Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum class. I welcome you to English grade 6 video lessons. I'm your instructor Zia Hamid. I hope that you're doing well and you're ready to learn something new today. My dear learners, we are dealing with our grade 6 and the unit is unit number 3, Captain Muhammad Sarwar Shaheed. The competency is of writing and this will be our lecture number 7b. The topic is descriptive writing. Now, descriptive writing or you could say descriptive composition. Let's read our students learning outcome and see that what we are supposed to do with this SLO and how do we achieve it successfully. Now, this is a, a two SLOs merged in this today's video lesson. Let's read the first one. Write a simple descriptive composition in that giving physical description and characteristics or traits of a person or object or place moving from general to specific using correct punctuation, complex vocabulary and spelling. By using the process approach and the techniques like brainstorm, mind mapping or writing a first draft and the final draft. And the next one is again it's about writing the final draft after complete editing and proofreading. So, Maria learners, in today's video lesson, we will be talking about descriptive com composition and specifically descriptive writing when we give description to our characters, places or objects and different characteristic traits. So, this is all about that. We will also be seeing the order of journal to specific writing and how we can follow it. We will also be seeing that using punctuation, complex vocabulary and spelling and also these are very important to uh, in your writing and by using the process approach of writing we will be talking about it and how do we uh, achieve it and how do we write the first and the last draft or the final draft. So, this is our uh, students learning outcome. Our focus is on composing a descriptive writing or descriptive text. Here is our vertical linkage of this SLO with the previous grade that you have already gone through and in that you wrote descriptive paragraphs giving physical descriptions and characteristics or traits of a person, object or place using correct capitalization, punctuation and spelling. So, it is linked with this SLO. Now, let's get started with our brainstorming session for today and in this one, we have a very interesting and basic question for you that why description of any person or place or thing is important? Why do we give description when we are telling a story, narrating a story or writing something, whether we are writing our biographies, autobiographies, and so many other things or when we are telling a story, why do we give description? Why do you think it is very important and how does it, it, how does it add up to the uh, overall meaning of the text? Now, after this quick brainstorming session and thinking about giving descriptions, now let's talk about descriptive composition. My dear learners, composition is composing and it's about writing. So, this is a type of text that we are going to cover which is descriptive composition. Now, in descriptive composition or writing, descriptive composition is a type of writing like there are so many other types of writing, descriptive writing is one of it, one of them that focuses on creating a vivid picture in the reader's mind using words. It goes beyond simply stating facts or events and instead aims to immerse the reader in a sensory experience. Now, when we are writing something, obviously the reader is not seeing it, but we have to write it so vividly and paint a picture in the reader's mind so that the reader can actually feel that he or she is in the place or in that seen that we are telling. Now, it's all about creating vivid picture, clear picture with our vivid verbs and specific words. We make 
uh, we write description of little things so that the reader can actually visualize what we are trying to say. Also, this is beyond stating facts or events and instead aims to immerse the reader in a sensory experience. Instead of just stating facts and just sharing information, you could just uh, paint it with your words and with your description. Now, let's talk about the order in which we write our descriptive writing. It is journal to specific order. Let's talk about it. In, com in composition, general to specific order is a method of developing a paragraph, essay or speech by moving from a broad observation about a topic to a specific details in support of that topic. So, my dear learners, you have read so many different type of texts. Did you notice that the first part of the text is always general, written in a journal way? And then moving on, we become more specific or the writer becomes more specific. So, this is a very good method of writing a descriptive, um, whether it's an essay paragraph or any speech or any text that you're writing. You have to come from a general statement, journal paragraph to a specific and be specific and particular about your topic. Now, let's talk about biographies because biographies include descriptive writing. Let's talk about it. A biography is a detailed description of a person's life. It involves more than just the basic facts like education, work or relationships and death. It portrays a person's experience of these life events. Now, how do we link biographies with descriptive writing? Well, descriptive composition in biographies vividly brings the subject's personality, environment and experiences to life, making their story more engaging and relatable for readers. Now, since we are talking about in the book, we are talking about biography writing, then we need to see that using our descriptive language, descriptive writing, we can write about any famous personality, any influential personality or any topic that we are given. By using uh, our uh, vivid language, vivid verbs, we can write a very good description of the person that we are writing about. Now, how do we write descriptive composition? Let's see what are some interesting tips and tricks to write a very good descriptive composition. Number one is using sensory details. Since descriptive writing is all about giving details of everything, the character, the place, the thing, their traits and characteristics. So, we use sensory details to create a vivid picture in the reader's mind. Describe what can be seen, heard, smelled, tasted and felt. So, when we are describing everything, when we are telling nitty gritties and every part of that, we are actually making the reader understand and make it, make it relatable for the reader. Now, let's see how sensory details actually make us feel more relatable. Now, we are dealing with our five senses. And sensory details are called sensory details because they are targeting your senses. So now the socks were on the floor. Instead of just saying this, the muddy socks were piled on top of the rug. Now this is much better. It has sensory detail that one can imagine and one can actually see by reading it. Another example is the plane flew over. Now. Instead of saying this, if you actually want your reader or your listener to actually hear the situation and the whole uh, scene, you could say, the buzzing sound filled the air. Now, the mud was gross. The mud felt slimy and cold between my toes. Now, this, when you read this one, you can actually feel the... Uh, message that is being conveyed to you and you can actually feel the touch of the mud 
in this example. The pizza was yucky. Now, this is a very simple statement, a very simple sentence, but if you add sensory details, it becomes really interesting and the reader can actually feel it and the sense can actually be targeted. The pizza tasted like cardboard. Now, this will give a very good idea to the reader uh, how the pizza, how the pizza tasted. Now, another last one is her perfume smelled good. Now, we can uh, transform it into a very sensory, by adding a sensory detail, we would say her perfume smelled like flowers and vanilla. Now, this gives a very good uh, idea and it's targeting our sense of smell. So, you can see that instead of using simple sentences, we can add sensory details to make it more vivid. Now, let's talk about another rule which is show, don't tell. You have to show to the reader what is actually happening instead of just telling facts and information. Now, instead of simply stating how a character feels or what is happening, use actions and dialogue to convey the information. When there are actions and dialogues, the writer would feel that he or she is actually witnessing the scene or the story. Next one is using figurative language such as similes and metaphors to add depth and complexity to your descriptions. Now, my dear learners, using figurative language in descriptive writing is very important because it can actually make the reader relatable to what he or she is reading. So, figurative language is very important and you have to vary your sentences and your sentence structure. Now, instead of just writing in the same kind of way, in the same style of writing, you could vary your sentences every time to make it more interesting and giving more description. Now, use short, punchy sentences for emphasis. Use longer sentences to add detail. This keeps the reader engaged. Now, when you are using smaller sentences, shorter sentences, they have to be very quick and very uh, crispy and crunchy, right? But when you are giving details, the sentences should be longer. And you cannot always just use longer sentences in all of writing. Some will be shorter and some sentences will be longer. Now, using transitions, transitional words like however, um, therefore, thus and so many other transitional words, we can move smoothly from one idea or scene to the next one. So, this transition in our descriptive writing is very important. We will be using transitional words. There are so many, you can look it up on the internet or you can ask your teacher about them. Make a list of all the transitional words and then you will know that it is very smooth to move from one topic, one idea to another idea. Now, let's talk about what we uh, studied in our students' learning outcome, the process approach of writing. Now, the process approach to writing is a method that involves several stages. It helps you improve the quality of your writing. Now, the process approach is actually a method. We are following these three steps, pre-writing, drafting and post-writing. We will learn more about them in other units, SLOs. Now, the process approach with pre-writing, you are brainstorming and you are collecting your ideas and in drafting, you are actually writing it and in the last part, um, post-writing, post you are actually finalizing your written text, proofreading and editing to make the final draft that is to be submitted or to be published. Now, here we will talk about writing the final draft. After a very good session of brainstorming, listing and so many other techniques and then writing whatever you are writing, whatever topic that is given to you or any assignment, now you will finalize the draft. And how do we do it? In this step of the process approach of writing, 
you should revise all the spelling or grammar errors and that's it your composition is done you look for spelling grammatical errors if you have uh, if you want to add more information or delete any information from your text you can do it in this step of the process approach of writing so there's pre-writing drafting and then post writing and we are talking about writing the final draft so if you read our SLO we write it together you know that we are talking about using punctuations, correct spellings and complex vocabulary. Now this is the time to actually look for any kind of mistakes or if you want to add anything and then finalize your draft. Now let's talk about your simulation video that you will be watching maybe after this video lesson or any other time. This will be very helpful for you to understand about descriptive composition and there are different tips and tricks in the video that will help you understand more about descriptive writing and when you will be given any topic for uh, your writing you can easily write as much description as you can now for your classroom activity this is taken from the book page 27 you have to read the main points of a biography of a person and then write a biography of a famous person first you, you will be reading a biography note down the descriptive language that is used and then you will be writing one of any famous person or any famous personality that you like here are some main points that you need to remember before writing biography of a person now here is your worksheet that you will be solving for practice this will be handed over to you by your teacher or your instructor let's talk about your homework for this video lesson for this SLO you will be given a project search a picture of a brave army soldier make a scrapbook paste that picture in the scrapbook write what great achievements he has done for pakistan and share your information in the class in the next day now this is a project that you will be doing we are here at the end of our video lesson with some resources for your better understanding and your help we have worksheet presentation, the lesson plan, skill sheet and a question bank attached in the description of the video and these things can be easily accessed. My real learners, thank you for listening and we talked about, let's give an overview, we talked about descriptive composition and why do we write uh, descriptive text, why they are important. We also saw that there are uh, some ways and some tips like sensory details or using figurative language and so much more to make you understand that these are all the things that you need to keep in mind when you're writing descriptive text either it's a story or it's biography of any famous person till the next video lesson my dear learners allah hafiz